Impressionism is very much the art of the bourgeois modern. And as you'll see in the exhibit, what's striking is that we could easily mistake American Impressionists for French ones and French ones for American, that there is a distinct vision that many of them shared, even across the Atlantic. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about the bourgeois age of the modern. Now, as one historian has said, the bourgeoisie were culture builders. They were both the products and the agents of modernity, that is of this new industrial system. And they helped perpetuate and disseminate its values and ideals in the midst of a fast modernizing world, inventing, but also changing the meaning of spaces and practices, whether it be the home or the countryside, but also bureaucracy and education, to think in nature as now being in contrast to the city, to think of leisure as being in contrast to work. And that is because modernization in the 19th century meant urbanization. And this involved the fast and ambitious remapping of cities, now made for bourgeois practice and spectacle, while controlling, designed to control and contain the working classes who were imagined to be unruly, immoral, and irrational. And again, this is important because I don't think we can grasp what the Impressionists were doing if we don't understand how their representation of nature, of landscape, of new leisure activities, of different kinds of social spaces was in fact tied to what was happening in this moment. Now, if I may for a minute, let's think about Paris. Napoleon III came to power in 1852, ending the Second Republic. And what he immediately decided upon is the remapping of Paris, designed to modernize this city. And this is re usually referred to as Haussmannization, borrowing from the name of the Baron Haussmann, who was a prefect of the Seine and was charged of overseeing this ambitious remaking of Paris, which is the Paris that we know today. So Paris was physically and literally remade. Large symmetrical avenues now crossed the city and allowed parades, not unlike this one, rather than barricades, bourgeois leisure and spectacle, rather than the dangerous social mixing between the classes. It was designed to promote mobility, consumption, and this new bourgeois social order. Shops, cafes, theater, concert halls, newly built parks lined these new avenues. New railway stations were built and bourgeois women were seen enjoying the new palaces of consumer cultures, the grands magasins or the department stores. These avenues or boulevards as we call them, opened the way for the emergence of the crowd, the bourgeois crowd, rather the unruly working class mob, and especially of the flaneur. The flaneur, that is the man who could stroll unencumbered at his leisure throughout the city, enjoying its pleasures and its spectacle, just as one would do here on the, on the side of this street, now lit by the new invention of electricity and allowing the delight in all that seems to be modern and to be embodying progress. Impressionists on both sides of the Atlantic are mostly known for the way they portrayed nature. But this was not the nature as it had been represented in previous centuries. This was very much a nature that had been reinvented and reimagined after modernization and urbanization. Now, French Impressionists especially painted nature, and they painted nature in the surroundings of Paris. And this is what we know best of them. Now, it was important because the surroundings of Paris, who might look like this American Impressionist painting, were a distinct space. They were, in fact, 
not subordinate nor derivative of the city nor of the countryside. They were distinct because they were neither urban nor were they truly rural. They embodied a way of living, of working, a space of enjoyment for the bourgeois classes, but also the middle classes. And these spaces too were modernizing fast in the 1870s because they also became the homes not just for bourgeois pleasure and uh, enjoyment, but also for workers themselves, lower middle class or sort of slightly more prosperous, who wanted their own gardens and to escape the overcrowded working class neighborhoods of Paris where they had been displaced to the edges of the city. So this is a landscape that is made possible by urban and industrial modernity. And many of the French Impressionist paintings that you may see in this exhibit or that you may know from elsewhere allude to the industry and the urban encroaching of these landscapes. For instance, Berthe Morisot, who is mostly known for her domestic interior and very intimate representations of femininity, nonetheless painted a number of these. In 1875, in the summer of 1875, she went to one of these not quite suburban space, Gennevilliers. And there she made a series of paintings that she showed at the second Impressionist show, the very same one where Degas showed his cotton exchange. And here, her landscapes included laundresses rather than shepherds but also the horizons of chimneys and smoke. So in many of these paintings, what we see are the stresses of urban and industrial change of modernity. New buildings in the background, new urban infrastructures, the railway stations and tracks that have bought the bourgeois couples and families for their weekend on Sunday in these enjoyable, not quite rural, but not quite urban spaces. Impressionist painters like Claude Monet were passionate about nature because they believed nature possessed a consistency that the world around them no longer did because it was fleeting, it was modernizing fast, it seemed to have taken on a new speed. So in doing so, in turning to this particular vision of nature, what the Impressionists did is they reinvented the genre of landscape or nature painting. They chronicled the modern as they, as they painted nature at the same time as they were working against it. And as a famous art historian has written, T.J. Clarke, what they were trying to do is to paint a foreignness of an unexotic kind, a foreignness that was at once familiar and comforting. Now, what that means is that nature was not just a space of contemplation, it was also a space of leisure. So embedded in those paintings, in the pleasure, in looking at them, in gazing at this kind of nature, what we have is a representation of a new social practice, leisure, which had never been conceptualized until the 19th century. These were landscapes arranged for urban use, available to bourgeois use, that allowed a different form of existence for these new social classes. And in fact, it is because industry and urbanizations had reshaped cities that Europeans could reimagine the concept of nature, a nature that was distinctly not urban, leisure and recreation, would dominate in contrast to the rhythms of work. And that's why this was not a rural nature either, because the rural was also the space of labor in the, way, in the ways that impressionist nature was not. And in fact, we have to remember that in order to gaze at these paintings, what we have to understand is that it is precisely because of these changes of the modern, that this kind of nature could be represented. It is thanks to the new railways that the middle classes could travel to these quasi-bucolic spaces, enjoy the illusion that they had left the city behind. An impressionist track, even 
when they are not there. They track the presence of these pleasure seekers. Even when no one is present in a painting, they are still present because they are the ones who come to these places to boat on riverbanks, to promenade in the fields, to stroll or picnic in the, in the parks. And again, very often in this kind of nature that is no longer for labor. This is the bucolic for bourgeois use. Nature to be enjoyed at the weekends and with a whole industry of pleasure available. Thanks to the Impressionist, nature had taken on a different meaning.